Hey folks, welcome back to Ray J's Outdoor Adventure. We're going to start off with this Kepworth Lithium Iron Phosphate 100 Amp Hour Battery, Part 2. So, part of the Indoor Adventure series here today. Um, I did some hookups. So, I did the um, unboxing last time, talked about the charger, talked about the information that was provided with the battery on how to charge the uh, battery and the indicators, right? So that was one of the takeaways. So I did charge it and the indicator did show red last time on the last episode. Now it's showing yellow. And it took me, cause it was right around 13.8 volts or something like, I can't remember exactly, but uh, it seemed like it was pretty, it was in a pretty good state of charge already. So I put it on charge. It only took like maybe about an hour. Um, that charger that comes with the Kepworth battery, which is really cool that they have this charger incorporated in it, it's a seven amp uh, charger. And then I've seen and heard and read about, they can go up to 20 amps, just a penny, and then that would obviously give you a faster rate of charge versus a seven amp. And um, when I look to see like how long it does take for a seven amp charger, I guess when it's, you know, completely depleted or pretty close to it, it'll take like 14 to 15 hours. So that's a long time. So if you were to have this on an off-grid setup and, you know, running like a uh, gas generator, right? And you're charging things, that would really suck 15 hours. So I don't know. That's a little bit of a thing that I'm grappling with with the, with the charging rate yet. So that's just something to think about. Um, and which would then get you into the thought process of getting a... Um, a higher amperage uh, charger for it. So I just wanted to show you this real quick. It does show true here. You see it's green. The indicator light is green. So this battery has been fully charged to the specs. The fan shuts off once it, uh, it gets fully charged. So that's one indicator as far as an audible along with the visual. And um, yeah, now the battery should be fully charged. So I'll put my voltmeter on it and show you, but what we're going to do today is we're just going to test, basically going to test DC to DC. No conversion whatsoever as far as an inverter goes. I did hook up my recently bought 2000 watt pure sine wave giant L inverter, which I do plan on using at the cabin. I want to replace what I have out there. And uh, that will be another episode for another time. But today, like I talked about before, was using a cigarette light adapter. Uh, DC, so it's just 12 volts to 12 volts. I'm going to plug in my Bouge RV um, cooler, DC cooler. Um, and I think in this use case, that you know, say you were to go, you know, camping or glamping and you wanted to uh, save money at least on ice and all that, right? Some of the old coolers just suck up so much ice on a hot day. So you can have this and you can do some other things with it, like the side USB, uh, put some lights, put a USB fan on it and stuff like that. So um, I guess that's enough of my talking. I, I can show you a couple other things here. I'm gonna test the battery, plug in the um, little cooler here and see how long it will last. Now doing the math, this cooler, it says, uh, it takes 45 watts to run. So if I'm doing the math, 1280, it should be around 28 hours. So I'm gonna start it, might as well, I'm gonna plug this, unplug the uh, charger and just hook this up and see if it lasts 28 hours. And we'll go from there. All right. Okay, so here I go. I'm gonna unplug this charger, right? I'm gonna plug it right now. And then the green light should disappear here since I just unplugged it. There it goes, it's fading out. Okay. I did not plug in the cigarette lighter adapter yet to go to the Kohler. But what I wanted to do was just do a quick uh, DC voltage check here to see. So hopefully you guys will be able to see that. I'll, I'll put the voltmeter on. All right. Hopefully you can see that. I'll, I'll bring the meter up. But uh, here we go. DC volts. All right, 
once it levels off here, we'll be able to get like a true reading. All right, it's saying 14.7 on my voltmeter here. Hopefully you can see that. Let me see if I can bring it up a little closer. This is kind of a pain in the neck here. Let's see if I can leave, these, leave this connector on somehow. Let's see if I can make connection here. Here we go. All right, so you see? 14.7, that's what it's at right now as far as 14.7 um, volts DC after everything was unplugged. All right, so I'll take care of that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the Bouge RV cooler here. So we're not going to turn on the Giantdale inverter, nothing like that, even though it is all hooked up. We're just going to go DC to DC and see how long. It should last. I'm hoping it's going to last 28 hours like calculated, but I will. Here it goes. You hear the beep on that. And then I'll shut this bouge. Here we go. I just want you to see this real quick. All right. That's the bouge RV. Right now it's saying 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 76. And it's running off the battery right there. All right, and I am going to shut this. We'll see what happens. All right, folks. We'll see how long this is uh, gonna hold out. I have quite a few things to do, so just come back and we'll see how it goes. And I'll let you know. Just to follow up, still going strong. As you can see, got like 13 one volts from the battery still running this uh, Bouge RV. And it's been going since about five o'clock yesterday. So we're running strong here. Gonna be close to a 24 hour mark here in a couple hours, so. Just wanted to report back. All right, folks. I'm a little bit stymied here, but it could be just the DC to DC, the efficiency of this battery and how well it keeps this Bouge RV little, you know, Kohler mini fridge kind of style compressor. It's a DC fridge, very efficient. I'm showing here, I got 36 degrees Fahrenheit at 13.2 volts uh, DC hitting this Bouge RV. So, you know, it's now three days, this setup here. So the Kepworth, right, at the beginning of the episode, I showed, I just taken the charger off, and it ran around 14.7, 14.6 volts DC, and then it kind of trickled down once it leveled off, and then... You know, from the last time I checked this, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure there's somebody out there that's got a lot more, you know, obviously electrical engineering knowledge. But, um, you know, for the basics, I would have to say um, this would be a handy dandy setup for going out camping, doing a little three day weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I would highly recommend this. I mean, the cost of a Solar generator, blah, blah, blah. But DC to DC rig set up along with, um, you know, the USB plugs on the side for like a fan and some lights, you know, if you're going to put that in your tent. It's pretty cool. So, you know, $179. I think the little plug, the female plug was like another 10 bucks or so. And, you know, obviously having one of these coolers, this one runs at 45 watts. I think it's just, you know, when it kicks on in the compressor, then it comes back down, but it's it's pretty efficient. So I, I think that that's where, you know, it's not a constant drain. So I think that that's where it kind of lasts a lot longer than, um, 
than I was expecting, you know, just doing the math of, you know, the 12 volts DC, 100 amp hours, you know, the 1280 uh, watt hours. So with uh, 45 watts, thinking it was 28 hours, a little longer than that. So anyways, this is it. So folks, thanks a lot for tuning in on this, uh, this episode. That's part two, you know, Kepworth lithium iron phosphate battery 100 amp hours you get it on amazon for like 179 dollars it has this little handy dandy usb plugs on the side for you know charging your phone do some lights whatever you whatever you think you know a little usb fan run this cooler the bougie rv cooler something similar to that you'll be set for a weekend i know that probably even longer just on a single charge so i hope you enjoyed the episode and um I guess the next time we do something with this again, I'm going to be working with the Giandale or Giandale 2001 inverter that I bought. And I'm going to put it in the cabin to see what kind of paces we could put that through. So thanks a lot for tuning in. Enjoy. Bye.